Okay, this is A2 Sports Psychology Revision. Um, I'm going to start off with personality, so individual factors, um, personality. So first theory is trait theory. Um, your trait theory is your nature theory, um, so which suggests that we are born that way. So your personality you are born with. So it's genetically inherited, key term to describe it. Um, behaviour is the function of personality, so the B equals FP, behaviour is the function of personality. Um, so genetically inherited, which means if you're born that way, it's not going to change, therefore it's stable. If it's stable, it's also enduring, it's going to last a long time, it's going to last possibly your whole lifetime, if trait theory were true. Um, therefore, your behaviour would therefore be consistent. So your, because your personality is the same, you will act the same in, across different situations in different environments. So one trait theory, one of the main trait theories is Eisenck's. Eisenck suggests we are somewhere on those two dimensions of extroversion to introversion. So an extrovert is someone who is lively, outgoing, etc. Someone, an introvert, is more at home in their own company, all right, more quiet and reserved and thoughtful. Uh, neurotic and stable, so we have neurotic, is very moody, up and down, happy one minute, sad the next, all right, very um, fluctuations on their personality, so you don't know what you're going to get with that sort of a person. A stable person is someone who is very reliable, all right, mainly calm, all right, you know, you know what you're going to get with that person. So that diagram gives us some extra kind of uh, descriptors of the different personalities. So spot in sport it's been shown that extrovert stable people, so in this corner here, are the most common personalities, right? people who are extroverts who like being with other people um, and obviously if you can keep your emotions under wraps and keep calm all right, and keep them the same, stable, um, that's probably an advantage in sport. Next theory is social learning theory from Bandura. So Bandura suggests that that's a lot of rubbish trait theory and that our personality is learned, all right, that it's nurtured as we go through life. So now we're on behaviour as the function of the environment. So in this instance, sport would shape personality. Um, so we learn our behaviour from different experiences in the environment. How do we learn it? The two main ways that we learn it, according to Bandura, is modelling and reinforcement. Okay, so modelling, uh, we copy off others. If you copy someone who is uh, of high status or a role model to you, or is of similar to you, all right? So if they have similar ability, same sex, etc., same um, skill levels, then you are more likely to think that you are able to copy that person. Um, if then that behaviour is reinforced, um, the model behaviour is reinforced, it's likely to have more of an effect because you will, uh, the model behaviour um, will be more likely to be repeated all right, if it's reinforced. So if those two things happen together then we get, when we get more of an effect. Next we have interactionist theory, so its behaviour is the function of personality and environment. Um, and this is a combination of the two, so it's a combination of trait theory and there's some social learning in there as well. Um, so here, we might get, um, within different environments, we might get different behaviour, but what the theory is also saying is that in certain environments, then you would get the same behaviour from that person if it was the same environment each time. But in different environments, you would change your behaviour. So interactionist theory is seen to be the most likely explanation that it combines the best elements of both theories together. So a good example of this is Hollander's model that looks at um, three different levels of personality. First in the middle is your psychological core. So this is the real you, it's how you are born, this is the trait theory part of the theory. Um, so that's very difficult to change which is why the, the line around that circle is very thick difficult to break through. Next is your typical response. This gives us an idea um, of your core. All right? We're able to measure your core by watching your, observing your typical responses in most situations. 
Then third is the role related behaviour, easier to change, easier to adapt and this is where the, in certain environments you might change your behaviour. Profile of mood states um, is a way of measuring personality. Um, it looks at those six things along the bottom, personality traits of tension, depression, anger, vigour, fatigue and confusion. Five of those are negative, the only positive one is vigour, so vigour, the fact that you have strived to achieve and things like that. The other five are negative ones. Um, so Morgan's research looked at the difference between elite performers and non-elite. And what he found is that elite performers have this iceberg profile, the one that's displayed there. So it's, an, it's the shape of an iceberg um, and in the negative characteristics the elite performers scored lower than the average population um, and in the one positive they scored a lot higher than the average population. So basically we're saying that they're not suffering from the negative things and they have lots of the good positive characteristic. We can criticise this theory or this research, the fact that, that the questionnaire may be limited, the fact that it actually measures mood and not personality and obviously our mood is very, very changeable um, and we can also say that some elite performers do not have the profile and some non-elite do have the profile and also we could talk about things like that the questionnaire might be limited in terms of the question that it asks that it's maybe not sport specific um, and also that isn't it isn't it obvious that if you are suffering from lots of these negative things that then you're not going to be an elite performer because you are tense and confused and depressed <laughs>